Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for this live conversation. The current monkeypox outbreak is now a public health emergency in the United States with more than 8,000 cases in the US. To talk about signs and symptoms of monkeypox and how to protect yourself, we brought in Christiana Care's Chief Infection Prevention Officer, Dr. Marcy Dries. Dr. Dries, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me back. So let's start with a basic definition of monkeypox. So monkeypox is a virus. Um, it's related to smallpox virus, uh, which was eradicated, uh, which is why we no longer vaccinate for it. Um, and you know, so really there aren't a whole lot of other viruses that affect humans in that category. So it's just, it's one of a, a family of, one in a family of viruses that happens to cause this particular syndrome. And what does it mean for monkeypox to be declared a public health emergency? Well, I think the most important thing that making that declaration did was it really freed up resources for states and CDC and others to really invest more resources to, you know, getting treatments out there, vaccines, uh, improving communication, and just, you know, and reporting and, and um, increasing collaboration between the states and the federal government to, you know, get ahead of this. And how does monkeypox spread? So uh, traditionally, you know, so basically there are four different ways uh, to get monkeypox. So one is kind of direct skin to skin contact uh, with someone who has monkeypox and, and has lesions. Um, the second is through respiratory uh, secretions, um, similar to COVID, but not nearly as contagious as COVID. You really kind of need that, you know, face to face, you know, hugging, kissing, you know, it, more, more intimate contact. Um, and then the third way is by touching um, items that uh, someone with monkeypox has, has uh, used. So towels, blankets, clothing, the, those sorts of things can be contaminated and then spread monkeypox. And then the fourth way, uh, which is more the more traditional way is through uh, direct contact with animals. Um, we don't have any known animal reservoirs here in the US, but in, in Africa where this uh, disease has been endemic for many years, um, it does circulate in a, uh, we think in a variety of rodents and, and other animals. Um, and our previous, our only, the only other previous experience we've really had with a, a monkeypox outbreak in the US was in 2003 with uh, infected prairie dogs that caused a multi-state outbreak. Um, so that was the mode of transmission then. This, this clearly is much different. So obviously there are a few different ways that you can contract monkeypox. So really anyone, including children, could be at risk for contracting monkeypox. Yes, it is very much, you know, anyone is at risk if they have exposures to someone with monkeypox. And there, there have been a handful of children, um, I think five or six in the U.S. at this point, but they all had direct contact with someone with monkeypox. Um, and, you know, the majority of spread that we're seeing right now is happening kind of in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, but certainly that's not the only, the only people that can get this disease. Anyone is really at risk. Uh, you're right. Absolutely. So let's go to signs and symptoms. What should we be looking out for? So um, the traditionally people start with what they call a prodrome. So it's a very nonspecific, you just feel sick. You might have a fever, headache, body aches, um, you know, but it could be, it, you know, does, it does nothing about it points toward monkeypox. Um, it could be COVID, it could be flu. Um, the one thing that it might be a little bit more suggestive of monkeypox is swollen lymph nodes, uh, swollen glands could be all over your body or in certain areas. We don't tend to see that as much with some of those other diseases that could be a clue. Um, but really, you know, the, the next stage generally will be um, a rash and it could be in specific areas of your body. It could be all over your body. Um, and, and not everybody will have that initial prodrome. So we'd certainly have seen people that present with what they think is a sexually transmitted. So lesions on the genitals, um, some have presented with like, severe rectal pain um, and then develop rash or lesions elsewhere. Um, you, can have, you can have lesions in your mouth, you can have them on your, on your palms and soles, which is a little bit unusual for most rashes. You can have them in, in and around your genitals and anus and rectum. Um, so they really could be. And you know, at what point should you call your doctor, especially if you're in that beginning phase where, like you said, it could be monkeypox, it could be COVID, it could be the flu. So I think it's always good to call your doctor, you know, if, if you have, if, especially if you know that you uh, are potentially at risk because you've had a contact with who had monkeypox or you're a member of that community and, and had some, some exposures that could have spread monkeypox and you start having those nonspecific symptoms. You know, it may be too early to test you because you, you know, the test really relies on having a lesion to swab. Um, but certainly you are contagious at that point. As soon as you start having symptoms, you're contagious to others. 
So that's really when you should kind of self-isolate, call your doctor, and then really just and self-monitor um, and get tested as soon as uh, any lesions occur. And what are the treatment options then once you're diagnosed? So again, you know, this has not been a, a disease that we've seen in the U.S. very, very frequently, and there are no um, uh, authorized or um, approved medications specifically for monkeypox. But we know because of the similarity between monkeypox and smallpox that the disease, the, the medicines that uh, that treat smallpox will also be effective for monkeypox. Um, so the one that we're that's primarily being used now is one called T-pox. Um, again, it's not something that's available at the corner pharmacy. It's been um, in the national strategic spot stockpile uh, because of the concern for a smallpox, you know, bioterrorism event. Um, and so that that drug is being released from the CDC from the stockpile um, and uh, to the state and, and local health departments, and they're administering or making it available. And what about vaccines? There are two options, correct? Yeah, so, and, and I, I, just to go back to treatment for a second, and not everybody needs to be treated. So for most people, this disease is self-limited. It might be painful and make you uncomfortable, and it might last two to three weeks until all those pox kind of resolve and scabs off. Um, that's when you're no longer contagious. So it's not, certainly isn't fun to have, but for the most, pers- for the most part, it is self-limited. So treatment often is, is um, recommended only for people who have more severe symptoms or depending on the location, like if you have a lot of lesions on your face, there's concern about scarring, you know, there, those people might be recommended. So, um, but that, but so that's, that's the other part about treatment. Um, as far as vaccines go, there are two vaccines. Um, the old traditional vaccine is called ACAM 2000. It was one that was developed for smallpox um, and really has been recommended only, f- only for laboratorians and other people that come in contact with smallpox virus. Um, that one is a live vaccine that's given in the skin. And because of that, it actually has a lot more side effects and has the risk of transmitting to other people. So like, for example, it can't be used in pregnant women. It can't be used in people who have a compromised immune systems. And it just has more side effects or more potential um, severe side effects. So the second vaccine was actually just approved about a year ago um, called Genios. And that one is approved for both smallpox and monkey. Um, and the advantage to that one is it's, it doesn't replicate. It's not a live vaccine. So it's much safer, um, better side effect profile. And so that's really the one that everyone's talking about um, is that Genios vaccine. We have a submitted question that goes right into this topic. If you have the smallpox vaccine, do you still need to get the monkeypox vaccine? So um, that's, I think it's kind of an it's a g- excellent question and it's a little bit unknown because most people, again, like I was never vaccinated for smallpox because that had stopped before I was um, uh, eligible for it. So most people who, you know, if you were vaccinated for smallpox, it was a long time ago. Um, and it's not really known at this point, you know, that was supposed to confer lifelong infection, uh, lifelong protection against smallpox, but we don't really know for sure how much protection still is, is against smallpox. Um, interestingly, though, what we've seen in Africa, again, where this disease is endemic, is that the, the cases of monkeypox have risen quite dramatically over the past decade or so. And, and they think that that's because we've stopped vaccinating against smallpox. And so that immunity that was protecting the population against monkeypox as well is no longer there. So there probably is some protection there. But I think if, you know, if you're a high risk person, um, even if you got vaccinated against smallpox years and years ago, it probably would be worth getting the monkeypox vaccine now if, you, if you're eligible. And we've, we've talked a little bit about the illness severity of getting monkeypox, but are we seeing people you know, in the hospital and dying from monkeypox right now? So for the most part, no. Um, I think you know, there have been some people hospitalized for sure. Um, sometimes that's only to, because they can't isolate anywhere else, but sometimes it is because of more severe disease. Um, to, to date, knock on wood, in the U.S., we haven't seen any deaths, um, but there have been some deaths reported from other countries um, in Europe and elsewhere. And usually that, you know, I think the cause of death was listed, listed as sepsis or kind of overwhelming infection, probably not from the monkeypox itself, but from something else that took advantage of, you know, the, the skin disruption and, and just the fact that the person was already ill. Um, we don't have a lot of details about those cases, but it seems like at least some of them were immune compromised or had, had other conditions as well. Um, historically, you know, there are two different strains or clades of monkeypox. The more severe clade has about a one in 10 mortality rate in, in Africa, um, 
and the other clade, which is the one that's circulating uh, in the US has about less than 1% or around 1%. Again, that's that's what we know traditionally from, from experience in Africa. So going back to vaccines for a minute, we have another submitted question. Who is recommended at this point to get the vaccine and is it available in Delaware? So yes, so the vaccine again is being distributed from the, the national stockpile through the state and local health departments. And they're just now in Delaware, at least, they're just now beginning to um, put into place a, a, a method for individual healthcare providers to order doses to give to their patients. So it is available through, um, there are some state clinics that can give it. Um, so it's really since the beginning of this, it's been focused on people who are close contacts with someone that's known to have monkey. Um, so the state has been admitted, has been arranging those vaccinations for those individuals once they do their contact investigation with the known cases. What they're opening it up now to is people who are at risk for monkeypox. So, for example, if you're um, if you're a, a gay man who is on prep for HIV to prevent your uh, HIV infection, you might be eligible for monkeypox infection because you know the same risk behaviors would uh, potentially put you at risk for monkeypox. So. Um, so that will be kind of evaluated if you call the state health department. Um, you know, certainly not all gay men, you know, need it. Um, it. It really depends on whether you're at risk, you know, due to your, you know, how many partners you've had and recent partners and, and, um, and that sort of thing. So just real quick, I'd like to thank everyone who is submitting their questions. Please continue to do so and check those links in the comments below. We'll link to the state resources and some CDC articles and other things that may help with your questions as well. So Dr. Dries, what should the general community be doing and those directly at risk be doing to protect themselves from monkeypox right now? Well, again, I think the general community, you know, again, needs to be aware that anyone theoretically can get this disease and it's, um, but, you know, it really depends on kind of what, what your behavior is. So if you have the opportunity to have skin to skin contact, doesn't have to be sexual, but often is. Um, or you're really face-to-face -face prolonged contact with someone who's at risk for monkeypox and you are, you are at risk. So um, anyone can really modify their risk by changing that behavior, um, avoiding, you know, sexual contacts with people you don't know, or, you know, it certainly ask if, they, if they're having symptoms. Um, the thing that's a little bit advantageous about this, at least as far as we know right now, is that people are contagious once they start having symptoms. Um, and that can be that fever or headache or nonspecific thing that you may not even think is monkeypox yet. Um, but it doesn't have that high level of asymptomatic transmission like COVID does. So that, that helps us. Um, but certainly, you know, kind of know who your partners are, know how to contact them um, if, if something happens uh, later on. Um, ask about symptoms. Certainly don't participate in any sort of activities like that if you yourself are having symptoms. Um, and just kind of avoiding situations where you're, you're crowded, skin is, you know, it's hot. People aren't wearing very many clothing right now, right? So even if you're, you know, at the beach or at an outdoor concert or in a club or anywhere where there's opportunity for skin to skin contact with people that you don't know, um, I think is potentially a risk. And we did have some questions submitted ahead of time. One kind of directly links to this part of the conversation, you know, similar to when COVID started, you know, and we said, you know, if you were at risk or knew someone who was at high risk, they kind of stayed away from each other. You know, should people be avoiding large gatherings right now, especially, you know, some concerts when you're rubbing up on people or if they have friends who live in high risk areas or part of high risk groups, is it kind of similar to COVID in which we should maybe stay away from each other? You know, I, it's certainly not nearly as transmissible as COVID. Um, even even the earlier versions of COVID, which are less transmiss were less transmissible than what we're experiencing now. I mean, I, I think you don't have to, um, you know, avoid, you know, having dinner with people or, you know, going to their house or having, you know, kind of casual contact with people. It really has to be kind of that, you know, that really close, intimate, skin to skin or face to face or contact with their clothing or bedding, um, you know, that that is at risk. I, I think other other types of contact are really fine. And another submitted question, if you've had exposure to chicken pox, does that provide any protection against monkeypox? Yeah, it would be nice, right? Because almost everyone's had exposure to chicken pox. But unfortunately, you know, it's, it's another type of pox. Pox just means a spot or a, a dot. It's a different type of rash. But the two viruses are not related. So unfortunately, your chicken pox vaccines or your history of chicken pox does not protect you. And another submitted question, is my risk for catching or getting serious symptoms from monkeypox oh. higher if I've recently had COVID, is there a connection there at all? You know, not really that is 
not nothing specific. Um, I think when people are ill from any other um, illness, they may be temporarily a little bit more su su um, susceptible, but I, I haven't seen anything that links, you know, recent or current COVID infections with risk of monkeypox. I think, you know, they just, they're, they're two very different viruses and, you know, and, and our immune systems are really able to handle more than one thing at a time, for sure. So I, I don't think there's a, a direct relationship there. Dr. Dries, thank you so much for your time today and all of this information. Before I let you go, what is the most important thing you want people to take away from this today? Well, I really think, you know, again, everyone should have some awareness about what's happening with monkeypox and what their, and, and should think about what their personal risk may or may not be. I um, mean, even if you don't feel like you're at one of the, in the high risk populations, I still think, you know, we need to maintain awareness about it, um, support your friends and loved ones who may be at higher risk. Um, and for those of people, those people who are in a higher risk group, you know, please reach out to your healthcare provider or your state or local health department to find out about getting the vaccine. Thank you so much. And if you're watching and have other questions for Dr. Dries, especially if you catch this after the live has wrapped, please continue to submit those questions in the comments and we can chat with you there. Also see all of the links and resources we've put in the comments that hopefully will help you out as well. Thank you all so much and have a great afternoon.